Welcome to the tutorial. Know about electrical panel and maintenance. Electrical panel. Part 9. Circuit breaker continues. MCCB and MCB. MCCB is classified into different types according to usage and tripping. Type B. They are operating at the fault current reaches 3 to 5 times the full load current. It is used for domestic applications such as resistive load, lighting loads, etc. The available operating time of this breaker is 0.04 to 15 seconds. Type C. This type of breaker specially used for inductive loads, such as transformers, welding machines, electromagnets etc. It has an operating range of 5 to 8 times the full load current with a time delay of 0.04 to 5 seconds. Type D suitable for heavy starting current applications such as motors, pumps, lifts, etc. It has an operating range of 10 to 15 times with a time duration of 0.04 to 3 seconds. Type K operates when the current goes to 8 to 10 times its full load current. The operating time for Type K MCCB is 0.04 to 5 seconds. They are the best suitable feeder protection. Type Z. This type MCCBs are very sensitive and they can able to allow 1.5 to 3 times the full load current. Type Z is suitable for electronics load, whereas high speed tripping required. of MCCB tutorial. Let us start the miniature circuit breaker. MCB is an automatically operated electrical switch. Miniature circuit breakers are intended to prevent damage to an electrical circuit as a result of excess current. They are designed to trip during an overload or short circuit to protect against electrical faults and equipment failure. MCB is designed to protect against both overloading and short circuiting. These are detected differently using separate processes. Overload protection is provided by the bimetallic strip using thermal operation, whereas short circuit protection is provided by the tripping coil via electromagnetic operation. If the discharge is especially high, the MCB will trip very quickly, within one tenth of a second. The contacts close again once the fault has been fixed and the MCBs are reset. Rated current of MCB is not more than 125 amp. Interrupting the current rating of MCB is up to 10 kA. MCB is mainly used for low braking capacity requirements such as domestic applications.
trip characteristics of MCBs are normally not adjustable since they prepare for low current circuits. International standards, IEC 60898-1 and European standard N60898-1. Define the rated current in of a circuit breaker for low voltage distribution applications as the maximum current that the breaker is designed to carry continuously at an ambient temperature of 40 degrees C. Type B circuit breakers are designed to trip if the current flowing through hits between 3 and 5 times the rated load. This is the most sensitive type of MCB, designed for domestic applications, and low voltage commercial settings. Type C circuit breakers are used for more powerful electrical devices where any surges are likely to be higher, typically in commercial and industrial environments. These are designed to trip at currents between 5 and 10 times their rated load. Good examples include smaller electric motors and fluorescent lighting. Type D MCBs are the least sensitive type, only activating when current surges to between 10 and 20 times the recommended maximum. D rated MCBs are built for heavy duty commercial and industrial devices where very strong current surges occasionally occur. Examples include welding equipment, X-ray machines, large motors, and uninterruptible power supply units. A few more specialized MCB models are available. These include Type K and Type Z. Type K MCBs will trip when the current reaches 8 to 12 times the recommended maximum. They are a good choice for motors. Type Z MCBs are highly sensitive MCBs, tripping when current exceeds the rated load by only 2 to 3 times. They are used with more delicate devices prone to short circuits, such as semiconductors. <music> Typical MCB wiring in DB. Incomer, DP MCB. Outgoings, SP MCB. Part 9. More details about circuit breakers are provided in the maintenance session of the electrical panel. Circuit breakers continue to part. 10. Thank you for watching the tutorial. Subscribe to the channel to get updates and more videos. Welcome to the tutorial. Learn about electrical panel and maintenance. Electrical Panel Part 10
The circuit breaker continues. Let us learn about ELCB, RCCB, RCBO, and RCD. N power shall be given to this terminal, phases, and neutral giving to this terminal. On off handle. This handle is using to make the device on and off. Test button. This button used to check the working of the device. It is recommended that tests be done in certain intervals. Power out terminals. Providing connections to the equipment. ELCB. Earth leakage circuit breaker. Phase, neutral, and earth wires of equipment connected through ELCB while it is working based on the earth leakage current. The operating time of the ELCB is very fast that an electrical shock will not affect the human body. The safest current limit which a human body can withstand is 30 milliamps up to 1 second. 30 milliamps ELCB will trip within 65 milliseconds which are faster than a human body could sense. So it is used in household appliances. RCBO, residual circuit breaker with overload. This is a combined device of RCCB with MCB, so that is coming with residual current with overload protection. Working principles are the same as ELCB but with the additional protection of overload current. ELCB will not do any protection against overcurrent. RCBO is a combination of MCB and RCCB. The RCCB operates when an earth leak occurs and the circuit breaker operates when there is an overload on the same circuit. RCCB, Residual Current Circuit Breaker. RCCB is designed to detect the current difference between phase and neutral that is also known as residual current. In normal operating condition, phase and neutral will always have a balanced current, however, when there is a fault or potential hazard happens a residual current will occur. RCCBs will detect a current as low as 30 ma, which is very small to detect by other means of the device. In other words, RCCB will operate when there is an earth fault. RCCB is a very useful device to protect the individual from electric shock. However, RCCB is always used in conjunction with other protective devices like MCB. As RCCB is only designed to detect residual current and not to trip on overload slash short circuit. Say in brief that both ELCB and RCCB are used for the same purpose but the wiring connection is different. Only phase and neutral wire shall be connected through RCCB whereas, an ELCB, the main earth wire is connected through it. RCD, residual current device. Generally, RCD is being used for RCCB, however, RCD is a generic term referring to any kind of device that automatically disconnects the circuit when residual current exceeds the specified limit. There is 
is some difference between ELCB and RCD. RCD does not necessarily require an earth connection itself because it monitors only the live and neutral. Besides, it detects current flows to earth even in equipment without earth of its own. ELCBs measured the voltage on the earth conductor, if this voltage was not zero this indicated a current leakage to the earth. The problem is that ELCBs need a sound earth connection, as does the equipment it protects. This means that an RCD will continue to give shock protection in equipment that has even faulty earth. It is these properties that have made the RCD more popular than other devices. principle of residual current devices. The RCCB works on the current balance principle. The supply conductors, the phases, and the neutral pass through a toroid CT and from the primary windings of a transformer. Secondary windings of CT connected to a highly sensitive electromagnetic trip relay that operates the trip mechanism. In a healthy circuit, the sum of the current in phases is equal to the current in the neutral and the vector sum of all currents is equal to zero. If there is insulation fault in the current and the leakage current flows to the earth, the current does not balance and their vector sum is not equal to zero. The imbalance is detected by the core balanced current transformer and the relay engages. Results the RCCB is tripped and the supply to the load is interrupted. End of part 10. More details about circuit breakers included in the maintenance section. Thank you for watching the tutorial. Subscribe to the channel to get updates and more videos. Welcome to the tutorial. Know about electrical panel and maintenance. Electrical panel. Part 11. Total connected load and maximum demand load. We can see two different values of load provided in the schematic diagram such as total connected load and maximum demand load.
details would be visible in every panel diagrams. What is this means? Why those values are different? Why two types of load calculations given in the drawing? Here we provide the answers with an explanation to all questions. Total connected load. TCL is the total electrical load designed for consumption according to the needs of a building. Maximum demand load. MDL is the amount of total connected load calculated by the diversity factor, which is proportional to the amount used by each device. Diversity factor, DF diversity factor means actual working hours of equipment. So that MDL is the multiplication sum of TCL with DF. DF is the percentage proportional to consumption. For example, if a 60 watt lamp is used 24 hours a day, its use is 100%. If it is used for only 12 hours, its actual consumption is 50% of the total capacity. Therefore DF is 0.5 of TCL, so MDL can be calculated as 60 into 0.5 equals 30 watts. explain this one more time. For example, here are the accessories that are connected in a small building. Air conditioner unit, 2. Electrical fan, 2. Water pump, 1. Lamps, 5. Plug unit, 2. We can calculate the MDL as per the table below. Let us analyze the table given here. The total load of the two AC units will be 2,984 watts and the MDL will be 2088 watts as the DF is 0.70. Other devices can also be checked in this way. The TCL of the two fans is 160 watts and the MDL is 96 watts when the DF is 0.60. Although the TCL is 746 watts, the MDL of the water pump is 186.5 watts because the DF is 0.25. The total load of the five lights is 200 watts and the MDL is 100 watts as the DF is 0.50. The TCL of the two plug unit is 500 watts but the DF is only 0.30, so the MDL is 150 watts. As shown in the table, the total connected load of the building is 4.59 kW. According to the diversity factor, the maximum demand load here is 2.62 kW only. Consumption is calculated based on the duration of actual usage only and not on the total load. However, the MDL may vary according to the consumption. TCL is used to calculating the cable size, preparation of circuit protection and system designing in panels. MDL is using to calculate the consumption of power in each building to do the metering of power. End of part 11. Thank you for watching the tutorial.
Subscribe to the channel to get updates and more videos. Welcome to the tutorial. Know about electrical panel and maintenance. Electrical panel. Part 12. Power factor. Power factor is the ratio between active power and apparent power. In an electric power system, a load with a low power factor draws more current than a load with a high power factor. The higher currents increase the energy lost in the distribution system. Any event related to the electrical network which ultimately results in financial loss is called a power quality problem. What are reactive power KVAR and active power KW? To understand what is reactive power KVAR, you must also understand what is real or active power KW and apparent power KVA because these three are interrelated. Although reactive power is the most important component of electricity, it is the most difficult part to understand. I use a very interesting analogy here to explain this. While this may not be 100% correct, these similarities will help you to easily understand what reactive power is. Coffee mug similarity. Coffee mug similarity, only explains the extent of the relationships between real, apparent, and reactive power. The following is given in the image provided here. KW is the working power. This is the actual power that consumed the equipment and performs useful work. KVA stands for apparent power. This KVA is the vectorial sum of KVAR and KW. KVAR is the reactive power. This is the power that magnetic equipment required to generate magnetic flux. From the details what has been said here, we can clearly state the need to reduce KVAR. Through the picture of the coffee mug shows that the higher the foam reduces the coffee. From this it is understood that the higher the KVAR will reduce the value of KW. Let us look at a simple example to better understand these terms. Suppose a mug of favorite coffee is ordered for you. The main part of coffee represents KW and a little bit of foam that you get in the mug along with the coffee represents KVAR. A 
Assuming that the total coffee in your mug is KVA, it is a sum of KW and KVAR that means coffee and foam. From this, we can understand the relationship between KW, KVA, and KVAR. Therefore, we now need to understand a few basic details about the power factor. Power factor is the ratio of active power to the apparent power. Power factor equals KW divided by KVA. Looking at the coffee mug we can say KVA is the sum of KW and KVAR, so that Power factor equals KW divided by KVA Or, power factor equals KW divided by KW plus KVAR That is, power factor equals coffee divided by coffee plus foam So say simply, having a low KVAR means that the system has more KW is available, just as a coffee mug has less coffee and more foam. We now know that KW, KVAR and KVA are vector quantities, so we can see another simple example to understand this in vector form. Cart analogy. As shown in the figure, when a person wants to pull a cart, the actual direction of movement that to use is KW. As he cannot pull the cart directly, he has to lift the link a little bit up to pull comfortably to the destination. This lift which is necessary but not directly useful is marked as KVAR. The total power is marked as KVA. So that, as per Pythagoras theorem, power factor equals KW divided by KVA. Since KVA equals KW divided by square root of KW square plus KVAR square, So the power factor will be one which is when the system is running under optimum condition. So to make it unity we cannot reduce the KVAR because when we reduce the KVAR in the above picture the person cannot pull the cart easily. So similarly in the power system, we cannot kill the reactive power, we can only compensate for it. To make the system perfect to do the effective work, we have to add a power factor correction unit attached to the main electrical panel. Power factor correction increases the power factor of a load, improving efficiency for the distribution system. Part 12. Thank you for watching my videos. Subscribe to the channel to get more videos and updates.